And we begin with the latest on a deadly crash that closed a section of State Route 40 for nearly 12 hours. Good evening, I'm Greg Warmoth. And I'm Martha Sigalski. Investigators say eight migrant workers were killed and 38 others injured after their bus was sideswiped by a pickup truck this morning. It happened near 148th Court in a rural area of Marion County. We're told 53 workers were traveling to Cannon Farm is when their bus was hit. That crash caused the vehicle to literally veer off the road, hit a tree, and flip into an open pasture. And late today, the driver of that pickup truck, Brian Howard, was arrested. He is now facing eight counts of DUI manslaughter. Our Felicia Ashley has been digging into Howard's criminal history. She joins us live from the Marion County Jail with those details. Felicia. Greg, we're outside of this jail because Brian Howard, as he mentioned, is inside after he is accused of driving under the influence this morning and killing eight people. What we learned is that this is not the first crash that he's accused of causing. We dug into his long criminal history and learned that he has been arrested before for his role in another crash. What started as a normal trip to work ended in a mass tragedy on Tuesday. Around 6.30 in the morning, investigators say 41-year-old Brian Howard was under the influence when he sideswiped a bus that was bringing 53 migrant workers to a watermelon farm in Marion County. They're supposed to be out working, flying for their families, and my neighbor was drunk and killed him. According to FHP, the bus veered onto the shoulder of the roadway, hit a tree, and went through a fence before it flipped over alongside State Road 40. Eight people were killed, and at least 38 others were taken to the hospital with injuries. We spoke with Landon Barnes, who recently lost loved ones to a drunk driver. To now be living next to someone who's accused of doing the same and killing at least eight people. It's unsettling knowing he was driving around drunk, a full grown adult, not thinking of any of it. Hours after the crash, I also went to Howard's home for answers. There is someone home because she came to the door and then turned the light off inside. Yeah, I think so. yeah. The person inside came up to the door but would not answer. So I spoke to Howard's neighbors instead. That the person accused and arrested for doing this is a neighbor. I'm gonna move out. I don't want to be around. I mean, that's 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 terrifying. Channel 9 also dug into Howard's criminal history. It's just like surreal, you know. I've been thinking about it all day. Over the last 20 years, he has been arrested twice on drug charges, as well as for grand theft and driving without a license. Howard was also found guilty of leaving the scene of a prior crash. Something's got to be done, you know. Or else this is going to keep happening. It's unsettling to know that your neighbor, your own neighbor, can take so many lives. Again, there are at least 38 people still in the hospital, some in critical condition. As of this moment, there have been no details released in terms of the identities of any of the victims. Reporting live in Marion County, Felicia Ashley, WFTV, tonight. Yeah, today, two words, pain and shock by so many people. And tonight, we are learning more about the migrant workers that were killed today. We spoke with several people also hired to work at Cannon Farms who are being housed with those victims in a motel in Gainesville. Yeah, a day's in is located about an hour away from the site of this morning's crash. And today, only Channel 9's Sabrina Majori was there when the Mexican consulate showed up to provide assistance. And she has more on their efforts to connect workers with loved ones looking for answers. An hour away from this deadly bus crash, representatives with the Consulate of Mexico canvassed this Gainesville motel, working to speak to migrant workers and families whose loved ones won't be returning home. This is very good, very good people. And now they lost the main support of their family. Consul General Juan Sabines Guerrero telling us all 53 people on this Oliveira Trucking Corporation bus were Mexican nationals. He says one of the victims is a new father who leaves behind a one-year-old daughter. He say with five years working every year, very hard work, in five years I can have um, something for her in the future. 
Uh, he was 33, 34 years old. Migrant workers staying here at the motel told us they take buses like this to their farm jobs every day. You can see this bus here is owned by the Olvera Trucking Corporation. That's the same kind of bus that was involved in today's deadly crash. You can see on this bus it says H2A labor workers and officials with the Mexican consulate also confirmed to us today that everyone on the bus did have a visa to be here. They stay in this country just for work with visa, H2A, uh, for uh, produce uh, uh, foods. Guerrero says some workers involved in the crash have legally worked in the country since January, others just weeks. He adds all of the workers are young, between 18 and 40 years old. Guerrero says his staff is providing support to victims and has activated an emergency number to try and coordinate communication with family. In the meantime, he says he's trying to learn more from the farm where workers were employed, and he has this message for Cannon Farms. I want to call we the company. Please, I need an um, uh, it's not for fighting, it's just to hear what happened with my nationals. In Gainesville, Sabrina Majore, WFTV Tonight. We're also learning more about the company that hired those workers. Yeah, according to documents from the U.S. Department of Labor, Olvera Trucking filed paperwork for 43 migrants to work at Cannon Farms from the first of this month to June. It did so again under that program Sabrina mentioned. It's known as H-2A, completely legal. The program al allows employers who meet specific regulatory requirements to bring foreign nationals to the United States to fill temporary agriculture jobs. Documents show some of those people were working six days a week at the farm harvesting watermelons. The company, based in Collier County, offered a base rate of $14.77 an hour with promises of housing and transportation to and from the fields. And, of course, you can count on Channel 9 to stay on top of every element of this story, from that DUI investigation to the dozens of people still in the hospital tonight. Yeah, we'll be bringing you updates online overnight. And then again, during Eyewitness News this morning, make sure to join our team tomorrow starting at 4.30 a.m.